Hello everyone, Space Doyster here with something kinda different. A review of Kirby Star Allies. Kirby Star Allies is the latest game in the Kirby series, released on March 16th, 2018, and it's lots of fun. This is my first time writing up a review to post in a video like this, so sorry in advance if I come across as a little... terrible. Also, while I do want to try and do this my own way, there's no denying that I definitely enjoy and probably even draw inspiration from Joseph Anderson and Yahtzee Croshaw. I do want to avoid emulating either of them, despite the high quality of their work, but there's really no avoiding it since I'm a filthy casual who's still figuring things out. Anyway, before I go any farther, I should probably mention my history with Kirby. For me, it all started on the Nintendo 64 with Kirby the Crystal Shards, then kind of faded in and out after that. I played through Nightmare in Dreamland on the Game Boy Advance, Kirby's Epic Yarn on the Wii, and Triple Deluxe on the 3DS. And that pretty much counts for all my experiences with Kirby, unless Super Smash Bros. Brawl also fits in. It was made by the Kirby team after all. The end result is that while I'm not the best authority on Kirby overall, I've enjoyed almost all of these games and would definitely count Kirby as one of my favorite game series despite its lack of teeth. So, the first thing to note about Star Allies is that it has a huge multiplayer focus, probably more so than many of the other entries in the series. The main gimmick is that Kirby can rip his heart out and throw it at his enemies to make them fall so madly in love with him, they'll follow him to the ends of the earth. This makes up the multiplayer component, since each of Kirby's new stalkers all play the exact same way as he does, minus the flexibility of switching abilities on the fly. They can all run, jump, fly, dispatch their former comrades with extreme prejudice, and even take a hit before exploding. However, if you'd rather play alone, that's fine too. The game will control each love-struck pony with brutal efficiency, making for one of the rare games where the single-player and multiplayer experiences are both worthwhile, rather than having one be sloppily tacked onto the other. I think. I haven't had a chance to try the multiplayer. While being AI-controlled, each ally is capable of seeing where their powers can be used, but it does take them a bit to notice. Or they'll notice too quickly. It's a bit annoying, but they can still get the job done. Although, they're even slower when it comes to noticing enemies. They tend to prefer to let you take the lead and won't move forward without you, for the most part. This is a game definitely enjoyed best with friends, so find a way to play with someone. Bribe a sibling, or something. Another big gimmick tacked onto the whole date rape thing is the ability to combine various powers and abilities. For example, if you're using a sword and one of the kidnapped victims is using fire, then you can put fire on the sword. A bold new step that the series hasn't seen in 18 years. The power combinations, while neat, are ultimately a lot weaker and less developed than they were in the Crystal Shards. However, they did Im implement type advantages similar to the pick a game with elementals things. So you can put out fires and fiery enemies with water abilities, make aquatic enemies deeply regret their decision to not evolve with lungs by electrocuting them, etc. This element system does open the door to a bit more strategizing when it comes to tackling bosses and the like, but it ultimately falls flat because of the harem you can collect. A total of four people with various abilities who can all be swapped around as needed really makes having whatever tools you need extremely easy. As for each individual power, well, they're all functionally the same as what they were like in Triple Deluxe. There are a few new ones, but it's pretty much all the same. Eat an enemy, get their power, use their power to mow down your enemies like a weed whacker. One interesting thing to note is that Kirby can treat his entourage as a portable buffet and eat one to gain their power. In fact, the difficulty on a whole is rather low. Not quite as easy as Epic Yarn, but close enough that it hardly makes a difference. As with most Kirby games, there are various secrets hidden behind puzzles and switches that require specific powers. However, unlike with most other Kirby games, having access to the powers needed to solve each puzzle is trivial thanks to all the backup Avengers. The new cleaning power in particular is useful to have on hand, since it gives you access to two of the four elements you may need. There really isn't all that much keeping you from being able to go through the whole game, start to finish, and finding all the secrets without having to once repeat a level. A few require a bit of skill to get to, but those are few and far between. 
Level design on a whole has been toned down quite a bit in difficulty too. Bottomless pits are trivial to avoid, even when the game puts you on rails with its friend train or friend circle. The risk of dying and losing a life is so minimal, they could have cut out a life system entirely and simply used checkpoints. Then, the occasional death would have felt like an actual punishment, rather than a slap on the wrist. Although, difficulty isn't the only draw, but sadly, Star Allies falls flat in other areas too. The creativity is also quite low, for one. Nightmare in Dreamland had whole levels designed to show off or test certain powers, like an obstacle course for the wheel or a bunch of right angles to show off the laser's versatility. In Star Allies, every single level seems to be little more than a gauntlet of enemies that you can get past just fine with any power you like. Not always, but there's so little variety on display here. The freedom of choice is fine, I suppose, but it doesn't really add up to much when all the choices are effectively the same. Boss fights really seem to be the only area where Star Allies is actually tougher than in other Kirby games I've played, but not in a good way. Each of the bosses have been given mechanics designed to challenge four players. As a result, all of the action becomes an absolute mess where it's tough to focus on where your own character is at and what they're doing, rather than being a challenge of dodging and counterattacking at the right times. Getting hit seems less like something to avoid and more like an inevitability. It's probably why there are two abilities that can make healing items. Since you're going to get hit anyway, being able to restore your own health becomes practically mandatory. Practically, but even without healing, getting through encounters is still pretty easy. Kirby seems to be a lot sturdier than in previous entries. Also, with three helpers, your damage output is drastically larger, but boss HP hasn't been adjusted very well to account for that. It's also possible to unlock a few special allies to tag along with you, but you don't really get to choose. They're more or less randomized in a specific place that you need to go out of your way to get to. It's a nitpick, but they really didn't need to be random. If a player really wanted to use a specific big name actor, they'll just keep rolling until they get the one they want. Then there are bonus modes, and I think they really hit it out of the park this time. First off, there's a boss rush mode that's pretty similar to the boss rush from Super Smash Bros. Brawl and is quite enjoyable. I haven't played it that much, to be honest, but it has a variety of ways to increase the difficulty, such as giving the bosses more health or going in with just Kirby, so it gets a non-existent gold star from me. The second bonus mode that I actually care about is Guest Star, where you essentially speed run through the game with most of the levels strung together back to back as one of the now playable enemies. It's a lot of fun having to fully commit to a specific power and learn how to best optimize it for a good time. That, and you don't have to worry about losing the power if you get hit too much, so it's pretty much the only mode I play now that it's unlocked. Although it does highlight how little variety there actually is in each of these levels. All in all, despite my gripes and all the complaining, Star Allies is still a good game, one I enjoyed playing all the way through. While a bit on the too easy side, the new gameplay mechanics definitely add more variety and depth to the Kirby formula and make it a lot of fun. As always, thank you all for watching, don't forget to leave a like, comment, and or subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Space Doyster, signing out.